Hello, and welcome to our podcast. My name is Yusuf Alarbi, and I am joined by... Mustafa Solomon and... Adnan Khalil. Today, we will be talking about the novel named The Great Gatsby. The story is based on the Roaring Twenties, and highlights the story of Nick. He narrates his life in New York, and his meetings with a millionaire named Gatsby. In the first two chapters, we get to know Nick, the narrator, and his friend Tom Buchan who is betrayed as a typical male in the Roaring Twenties with his toxic masculinity and recklessness. In chapters 3 and 4, we get the basic outline of Gatsby. Tom is married to Nick's cousin, Davy. However, despite his affairs with Miss Wilson, she is aware of his actions and she is an understanding of it and tries to protest, but cannot do anything about it. Let's talk about Davy. What do you think about the character Davy in the story? Does she represent anything? Yeah, so I believe that Daisy has a stereotypical societal view of women and then portrays the ideal women in the 1920s. As mentioned in chapter one, she says, I'm glad she's a girl and I hope she'll be a fool. That's the best thing a girl can be in this world. A beautiful little fool. Daisy talks about her newborn baby being a, a girl and emphasizes her own thoughts as to what she wishes for it to become fool, which is a person that has no idea about their surrounding area. This reflects on Daisy's character as of knowing what is morally incorrect according to society and still acting ignorant towards such values, showing a more foolish character. This in turn would spotlight the Roaring Twenties' society of their own set of womanhood and having to be ignorant in order to lack the feelings of, of pain and betrayal. It also emphasizes the way women used to live, as their only option is to be married to a man who might be quite possibly be unfaithful. I completely agree with what you said, and I have also seen this happen many times. For instance, in The Great Gatsby, women have been looked down upon various times by people and are being portrayed as less than men. For example, in the beginning of chapter 4, on page 39, Nick opens up the chapter by saying, The world and its mistress returned to Gatsby's house and twinkled hilariously on his lawn. Through the use of juxtaposition, the narrator is suggesting that the entire world and woman are separate, showing how women are viewed as the property of the world, indicating a theme of gender supremacy. Uh, the continuous impediment of women portrays them as being objects and mere possessions to men, suggesting a patriarchy that demonstrates a society where men are held over women and are viewed separately to the world. The add-on, Fitzgerald is also able to perfectly express gender roles through his interesting use of wording and vocabulary to create clear settings in the reader's mind. This is portrayed again on chapter 39, on page 39, when he says, where ashes take the form of houses and chimneys and rising smoke. And finally, with a transcendent effort of ashy gray men who are more dimly and already crumbled through the powdery air. The narrator is able to portray men as workers through his lexical choice by saying ashy gray men implying that not only are men the ones working but the job uh, that they do is very hard leaving them all dirty by only mentioning men at work they are being characterized as the providers and by not mentioning women in the text suggests that they are at home doing less manly things like house stories. The theme of gender roles is being developed by referring to men as the ones working and getting their hands dirty, while not mentioning women. This promotes the idea of men being the leaders of society. The description of gender roles promotes a hierarchy in society and reveals men as being superior to women due to their actions. I really like that idea. Have you guys also noticed that even Nick, our narrator, is sexing against the women in the story? 
On page 64, he shouldn't to be sexist. During his time in the book, Miss Baker was being dishonest towards the next. However, he only comments with, Dishonesty in a woman is a thing you never blame deeply. I was casually sorry, and then I forgot. The use of the word deeply gives the impression to the reader that this is something that is common towards women. Because Miss Baker is a woman, Nick isn't upset or disgusted by her. He accepted this outcome from Miss Baker, and that's why he forgot the problem. It wasn't worth his time or effort. Nick accepts her to do unthinkable things. He believes that Miss Baker cannot do the right thing, and is only a selfish person because she's a woman. He doesn't just think that of Miss Baker, however, but of all women. He believes that all women can do the right thing. They're just things that need to be taken care of. This shows the reader that Nick portrays many of the ideas in hegemonic masculinity. How men must always be in the right, women can only do harm. Women can't do something better than a man, and so they always assume they are doing the worst. I can understand your point about Nick, and how he portrays hegemonic masculinity. And I think another idea in the story that we must mention is the portrayal of class in the story. I find it very interesting that Fitzgerald uses the color brown to embody Miss Wilson's character, which highlights the significance of her being in the lower class with the choice of color of brown. Miss Wilson is trying to bet her best to replicate her wishes of becoming upper class while they were getting onto the train. Nick narrates she had changed her dress to a brown figured muslin. Miss Wilson wears a tight brown muslin to form symbolism, which gives the effect of a relative sign of money. However, with the brown being sort of less valued metal like copper, this symbolizes Miss Wilson's triumph in imitating what she does not own, but her imitation seems as more rotten and symbolizes more rotten, as brown is a relative but sort of downgraded color of a strong yellow, and yellow is mostly compared to the metal gold. This mostly reflects on the Roaring Twenties' importance on, on trying to be in the upper class, to try and look luxurious and wealthy, as well as imagine things that someone could not possibly have, and then be more materialistic. Another thing is that class, a class calls the division of people. It also replicates the theme of social segregation and the bias of people based on the class of others. This is strongly highlighted in the story and even through the eyes of Nick. Throughout the story, Fitzgerald highlights the, difference, the different classes and the segregation between them by portraying the lower class as being ignored by society. This is shown on page 39 when Nick describes the Valley of Ashes as a fantastic farm, where the ashes grow like wheat into ridges and hills and grotesque gardens, where ashes take the forms of houses and chimneys and rising smoke. Imagery is being used throughout the text to uncover the devastating state of the lower class in the society. Houses are made of trash. The entire valley is filled with ashes. There are grotesque gardens. A setting of division is being created. The lower class is being portrayed as being filthy and dirty. This reveals the upper class is being prioritized, while the lower class is being disregarded and left to decay. People are segregated according to their classes. The lowest class is uh, disregarded by society, erasing the opportunity for people to rise up from the class they were born in. This further reveals the division between the classes and how different the Valley of Ashes is from the East and West X. I can see your point about how people are separated within different classes. I'd also like to mention that a lot of people in the higher class category are blind to the people's feelings below them. On page 74, while Nick and Gatsby, passed by a family whose loved one just passed away, he states that he was glad, during the somber moment of time, that the sight of Gatsby's splendid car was included in their somber holiday. This good choice of the word, splendid, means that even when the family is grieving for their loved one, the car ride and subsequently the burial of the deceased is a happy memory, due to the magnificence of Gatsby's car. Fitz Fitzgerald chose Splendid to infer to the reader how shallow on one side 
the higher class can be at times. The people of the higher class do not understand grief and believe that their presence has brought them happiness. Their luxurious items and their very expensive price tags make the whole family swoon at the sight of Gatsby and Nick. They believe that they are a ray of hope for the family and to continue living on. This again shows how the higher class does not understand people's emotions, but only their way to satisfy themselves and show off to the people who are less fortunate than themselves. There are more instances of class division in the story. Fitzgerald has an elegant way of describing events that take place in the book. He is able to depict the party through words and demonstrates the segregation of classes through his visual imagery. On page 28, he says, A tray of cocktails floated at us through the toilet. Visual imagery is being used to describe a tray of cocktails, but the waiter was never described. This suggests that people in the working class are being disregarded throughout the text by the higher class, highlighting the setting of the party and how all the guests are disregarding any working class characters like the waiters, suggesting a division in classes and how higher class members do not see lower class members as people, but instead are disregarded and ignored. I like your interpretation, but I have a different idea. This piece of evidence also uses visual imagery to show the arrangement of illegal drinks and beverages in a way of a train. This spotlights the wealth of Gatsby and his way of showing his wealthiness off. The drink used was obviously alcohol, which is which was considered Ill illegal, but also elegant. This would also make it really expensive. This also quickly pre previews the, the upper class at the time and their way of showing their money off, which could also lead to legal actions such as buying alcohol, which was banned at the time. Another way Fitzgerald has brought up the class division is through Nick. We can see this on page 60, where a car crash occurs at Gatsby's house. When the car crash occurs, we can see someone who emerges from the wreckage. Nick goes to question the man about how the crash occurred. As they talk, we find out that the man is very bad at driving, and Nick accuses him for crashing the car. The word criminal suggests that the man is uncivilized, barbaric, and a brute, and also a dangerous person. However, before the man can finish, we learn that the man wasn't the one driving. Since Nick is of a higher class, we can assume that a lot of people, like Nick, would think similar to him. People of the higher class would believe that people who are below them are the cause to all their problems. This will automatically be accused, even if wrongfully done so, like the man. This in turn makes people of the higher class try to distance themselves from people of the lower class. Besides the lower class maybe asking for money or being dirty, the higher class would see only their value in their wealth. Because they are not valuable to the people of the higher class, they are not they are seen as nuisances and a waste of time, energy, and money. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast about the great Gatsby. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.